So I have a couple tips and tricks for this part. Uh, I needed it to be to fit like very tightly, and it was a little short. So what I did was I shimmed it up, and this gets me close enough to put my caudal forms on. And another reason why I really like this foam is because I can take my caudal forms and get them like I can actually compress that foam and get it really tight. Um, so much so that I there's like very minimal like sealing up that I have to do uh, with the plasticine clay. Um, this is my fourth time pouring this mold, and I haven't done any like additional sealing up at all. And I've had like just like little baby leaks, um, so it saves me a lot of time in between mold making. Um, your optimum thickness is going to be one, one and a half, or two inches. I really like an inch and a half. Um, it seems to work well in terms of the plaster kind of setting up in between pores and things like that. So your, your exterior wall around your object, optimum thickness is around one and a half inches or so. That's another nice thing about using this um, foam is that I can lift up the caudal form and move it around and not have to worry about knocking things loose. Um, how many of you guys have witnessed someone trying to make a mold and plaster go everywhere? Happens every time. It's probably going to happen to you. It's happened to me. Me too. Um, nice thing about this is it reduces the risk when you're like tapping the table and trying to get all the air bubbles out. Um, I'm just going to do one final coat. This thing's pretty good and greasy, but I want to make sure that my mold's going to release super easily. Burfield soap is diluted just a little bit. Yep, there's a little bit of water in there. Half and half. Give or take. If it gets okay. too thick, then you start to get a texture from the soap. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's bad news bears. You don't want that. So I'm just coating everything in here. Like I said, um, my plaster block is pretty coated. Pay attention to what I was talking about. Like, you guys understand what I mean when I was adjusting the seam? I was bringing the widest part of my object up to meet the pink foam or pushing it down if it needed it so I didn't have any undercuts. Um, ideally, in a perfect world, the only thing that I would need to coat in here is the plaster um, because my wood paddle forms are sealed with polyurethane and the plastic isn't going to absorb any plaster, but I just like things to be extra nice and greasy so it comes out easy. If you do get too much on there or it's starting to develop a texture, if you just take a sponge with some water on it, you can sponge things down and it should disappear. Mm -hmm. Do you wait until it uh, until it dries before you pour it on there? Or do yeah, you... we're pretty close. So yeah. on this plaster, it's, it's not going to absorb that much of this. And so it's going to be a little wet and there's going to be a texture on it. I'll just give it a quick wipe with a sponge uh, before I'm done. Same thing with my, my uh, keyholes. I just want a little bit of grease in there, but I don't want them to be have little pools of, of uh, soap in there. Yeah. So I just sponge those out. Um, now I'm going to talk about plaster. I said I was going to do that before. So, reasons that we weigh plaster, weigh and measure plaster. Why would we want to do that? Any guesses? Wow. Rock. Well, it's it doesn't waste, and also it gets the optimum density of... The, the, the finished plaster. Yes, so Georgia Pacific, which is the company that makes our plaster, uh, has engineered this specific pottery plaster to have an optimum ratio of water. So it works best for mold making at a certain amount of water to plaster ratio. Um, on there is one chart. In your compendium, if you have compendium, is Richard Notkin's chart. I prefer this one. It's easier to remember. If you look at the numbers, they seem complex, but yeah. It's basically 1250 for a quart, 2500 for two quarts. It breaks down. Um, it's pretty easy to remember. I really am a big advocate of this chart yeah. and the uh, and this whole page by Richard Nackton. It literally will take me a set, of, a set of stopwatch. I'm going to weigh my plaster and my water to illustrate my point. All right, ready? So I know I'm going to go for two quarts of water <laughs> and 2500 grams of plaster. Done. A minute and 15 seconds. So now instead of, how many people are familiar with the slaking method of plaster? Like where you just add it until you get the mountain, right? That's kind of like the poor man's 
plaster mixing or like don't need specifics. Um, but in terms of slip casting, to have a mold that's going to last a long time um, and a mold that's going to heal, I guess I'll say, or um, unsaturate or recover quickly, you want that optimum density with your plaster and water. What I'm going to do next is a very important step. Even though we double bag our plaster, it's been sitting here for a while, and it probably sat outside for a couple days before we brought it in, um, your plaster needs to be dry and aerated. You can use your hand and aerate it. I found this little tool works really well. Um, I made some molds last night, and I had one that I just did with my hands, and when I went to mix it, it was like all clumpy. Clumps are bad. You don't want clumps. It might be like you have, you know, oils on your hand might affect it. Um, yeah. Just being, you know, not actually physically touching it. Mm -hmm. uh, well, touching it the least. Yeah, know, this kind of just seems to work really well for breaking it up and aerating it. Yeah. Um, I've used a whisk before. You do not want to use a sieve. Uh, it clumps up the sieve and then you can't really wash it out because we don't want any plaster down the sink <laughs> ever. <laughs> no plaster down the sink ever. Very important. You guys didn't, you guys missed this, but this is my sink. I filled this bucket up with water. I bought this bucket with this intention. It doesn't do anything else. It is my, I'm making molds. I need my hand rinse in the bucket. Clean hands. I always keep a towel over here too, just for that reason. Um, you do not want to dump that water down the sink ever. You never want any plaster down the sink. Go to the back studio in the sculpture room after someone has used the sink and you find out why we don't dump plaster down the sink. Because it smells back there, that's why nobody works back there. Um, so aeration, this is very important. Clumps are bad. We want nice aerated, powdery, dry plaster. In a perfect world, or in Richard Knockin's world, we call the manufacturer, they tell us right when it's coming off the boat, we go pick it up and double bag it, and it never gets moisture in it. We don't live in that world, and we're not Richard Knockin. So instead of slaking, which I'm just going to say is like a big guess, it, the mountain is going to depend on how fast you're adding plaster to the water, the temperature of the water, um, how, I don't know, where you're putting the water in the bucket. This is like science. It's an exact. I know it's going to work every time, no matter what. So I know exactly how much plaster I'm going to mix, and I can almost put a stopwatch and set my clock by how quickly it's going to set, depending upon the temperature of the water. Hotter water sets faster, cold water sets slower. Um, now that I have my water rendered out and my plaster, I'm ready to start mixing. I should have just enough time to do this. Did you say what temperature that was supposed to be in? I did not. Room temperature, around yeah. 70. Yeah. Um, so on there, I think I say three to five minutes for everything. And I think Richard Notkin said something like two to three. I am a fan of five minutes, at least. So five minutes of sprinkling, and when I sprinkle, I'm trying to just lightly sprinkle that plaster into the water, not necessarily in the middle, kind of all the way around. Um, you don't want to drop it from too high, things can clump. Being gentle, not agitating it, just mixing it in there. You want to do this over the course of a few minutes. You don't want to do it super fast. You don't want to take all day, but a couple minutes. I like the five minute rule. So after I sprinkle this, then I'm going to let it soak. And one thing that I learned after reading a little bit about this is that as long as you don't agitate plaster, it can soak for almost indefinitely. Like you could soak it for half an hour if you wanted to, as long as you're not agitating. I found that at least five minutes is good. Lately I've been doing ten minutes of soaking. And then it's really nice, you almost don't have to mix it. It's like really nice and creamy. Just like, you want to drink it, it's so smooth, it's so nice. <laughs> if you don't soak your plaster, it's going to clump up. You're going to make a lot of work for yourself. And you're probably going to have a lot more air bubbles. Plaster mixing is the endless struggle against air bubbles. Timer should be... We'll see. Waiting for the you got timer. The timer going? Yep. Okay. So it's always going to be different how fast you're going. I've 
made the same mold, same monoplaster, same water. It was my fourth time. Right on the money. <laughs> Sometimes I'll come back in a couple of minutes, and if there's a ring around the outside of moisture and still a big mound in the middle, I'll knock some of the mound off on the outside um, to help the absorbing. But you just want to let it sit. Don't touch it. Oh, yeah. Don't resist the Don't touch it. Don't vibrate. Yeah. Don't touch. Don't want to do anything. So it's, it's like chemistry, really. Like, as soon as you start agitating, you activated mm -hmm. the plaster, just like yeast. Like yeah. yeast, you proof yeast when you're making bread. And you're activating the plaster, yeast and then the that chemical reaction is going to start. Yeah. Well, plaster is going to start to set. It's a good idea to get a plastic container. You can use another bucket like this. Pour all your extra plaster into there and let it dry. And it's better to have dry plaster and let it set up and throw it away in the garbage oh, than okay. to have a bunch of like really plastery water and throw it out. This yeah. is going to be like 99% water. But there's a little bit of plaster there. I don't mm -hmm. want that. Um, also, it's probably a good idea to put it in like a flexible bucket because yeah. if you put it in a five gallon bucket, it's really hard to get out sometimes. Yeah, I like suppose you can kind of bend it. Yeah. yeah. yeah and those are kind of, you know, more disposable than the five gallon. Right. Bucket. I usually keep around like yogurt containers. Yeah. Oh, and then, so like this guy, I, I carved him from like a block of solid plaster. Mm -hmm. You have those yogurt containers, you just fill those up. It's like a blank you get a car and you make a mold or something. Mm -hmm. You can like even reuse it. I have tons of blanks hanging around. I'm just knocking that to the outside. I'm probably going to do the 10 minute soak. Because when it's, like, I want all this to be kind of underwater or very, very oh. soft. I never slept it that long. <laughs> uh -huh. What? Yeah, so this will be the first time. Oh, it works Some out people, so well. You can do it for an hour. Some people say, you say like, that no, you can, and some like, people say you can't. Yeah. Some people are like, no, you can't. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Both of those but parts, if it works for you, hey, it's working. Both of those parts soak for 10 minutes. No All right. And like you said, it makes it creamier. It's, it's um, like not having to mix. Chemical interaction already started, so every single particle of plaster is giving a chance to react mm -hmm. instead of being rushed, right? Yeah, because the once you start mixing it, it starts solidifying. Like, mm -hmm. I've, I've heard that if you mix faster, it sets faster. And if yeah. you... That's what I've heard. I don't know. A lot also, of people... Mika used to have the word, at least this is what I was told when I started subcasting, is that it's not worth it to make a mold unless you're going to be pouring it, like, what do you say, like 50 times or something like that? So, time consuming. Well, this one is rather simple, but uh, imagine more complex puzzle. Yeah. It's like a, a week of your life, you know. Yep. If you're not repeating 50 times, if you cannot picture yourself repeating 50 times at least, it's not worth it. Mm -hmm. this, this is really quick. I mean, you, you can you I, got it down to the science. Mm -hmm. I try to make things simple. Um, <laughs> one thing that really takes a lot of time, and the reason why I like working off a square mm -hmm. and using this foam, one thing that takes a lot of time is sealing this up, all your edges. So if you guys are making a mold, you're going to have to seal up all these seams along the perimeter and the vertical axis. Um, otherwise, what's going to happen is you're going to pour your plaster in there, it's all going to leak out the bottom. I might get a little bit of seepage on this one. Yeah. But I'm not worried about it. Yeah. Um, it's pretty tight. I call it the angel share. <laughs> so now that my timer's gone off, that's been 10 minutes. This is looking pretty good. I might even let it go longer, but I think it's going to be good. It's nice and saturated. You can see it's pretty, pretty uh, loose looking, I guess. Nice and soft. You want this one? So you want to, however, you want to think about mixing this plaster gently. You don't want to introduce any air bubbles. Remember, it's the struggle against air bubbles. Air bubbles are bad. <laughs> So I'm just going to kind of plunge my hand down like a blade, and I'm going to submerge my hand, and now I'm just kind of doing this sort of a thing under the water, nice and creamy, mm -hmm. oh man, it feels so good, there's no chunks. <laughs> Anybody with dry skin, you should wear gloves. Yeah, I should wear The main thing is that you're not plunging your hand down and dragging yeah. your hand down into the bottom. That's like your biggest enemy. So all these air bubbles on the top. I'm only going to do this once, but mm -hmm. this is the magic. Uh, isopropyl alcohol, yeah. see those air bubbles? Oh, this up here, look at that. Oh, that. <laughs> uh, that was something Tom Meyer showed me, but maybe he picked it up from that. Okay, yeah. Right. And it's supposed to be the 90% of This works. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cheap, I guess. Strings. I don't think I knew that. Else. Brock told me that today is supposed to be like 91. 91, yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that, but it seems I to think work it works. pretty well. Yeah. It knocks um, list of purchase, you know, shopping list was this long before he came and visited us. And it's, he said, I have to be 91. Have to be. <laughs> so I rinse my hand up in the sink. This is nice and creamy. I'm not worried about it. That yeah, looks nice. 
Who says, oh yeah. yeah. What you call this? Well, heavy, um, cream? heavy cream, yeah. Heavy cream. Sour cream would be good. I like to pour it out of ice. Yeah. yeah. I like to pour it at heavy cream. Some people say you should be able to draw away. I don't like that. I think it's too thick. As long as it like stays together, kind of when you're when you're pouring it, it should be good. So if we had one of those rumble things, mm -hmm. um, I'm just trying to bring air bubbles up to the top. Some people tap the bucket on the ground. Mm -hmm. There's got. To, I know there's a magic trick. It's probably just that rumble thing. <laughs> But I am never, ever satisfied with the amount of air bubbles in my plaster. There's, there's always like a million still, like after you kill all of them. Yep. Like, you think you got them all. Nope. You only got half of them. <laughs> Knock on wood. I've gotten pretty good at getting rid of the big ones. Yeah. Oh, so after you start mixing, that's another like, keep an eye on the time. Roughly about five minutes is your max. Um, sometimes I like to go in and give it another stir with my hand, trying not to drive any air, just checking the consistency. Still melted ice cream? Oh yeah, it's nice. It's mm -hmm. looking nice. It's pretty good feeling. I'm <laughs> starting to get a little bit warm. It's nice. It's already warm? Like, the water was a little warm, okay. but it's not like heating up yet. It's not heating up. <laughs> if it's heating up, it's too it's far. Too late. <laughs> yeah. But it's get. I like it. It's looking good. Still, like you can see, that's what you want. It comes off on your hand like that. Um, so I'm gonna pour this after I give it another couple knocks. Like I said, a struggle. So pouring. What you're gonna do is pour into your hand, and you're gonna deflect the plaster into the wall. Some people go into the corner. Do not pour right onto your object. Bad news bears, and do not splash. You want to be nice and, and like continuous, and once you start, don't stop. Sometimes it helps to have a partner here. Me and Brock got a pretty good system sometimes when we're pouring larger molds. Yeah, basically it just shouldn't splash. Like if it splashes, you're done for. You're putting bubbles in it, and it's just. And then this bucket goes right into my sink. I switch it around to keep anything from setting on there. Keep my towel. So you see I have like an arsenal of tools here. Oh, flattens right out. So you can sit and do this all day if you want to. I think I kind of missed the boat on the bubbles. It's a little too thick for me. That should be our next purchase. One of those rumblers? Um, or you can just have your husband make one. <laughs> I was also, also um, I like to give a spray too. If you, yeah, that's nice. Um, if you have the, the clay in the bottom on the inside. Um, and you're working from the table. Yeah, and you're like, yeah, casting onto the table. So plaster is hitting the table. Um, Much rumbling it around oh. like that is, is a risk. But I think you sh still should do it a little bit, you know? Um, so if you're casting straight on the table and you're rumbling the table, there's a chance that seal's going to break. Yeah. I'm not going onto the table, so I could actually, I'm not going to, but I could hypothetically move this whole thing around and have much less risk. <laughs> Hopefully, with these education sessions, we can cut down on the amount of waste yes. and um, misuse. The communal bucket sounds good for the and drying bag. The just, just for what? Have a emergency oh. bucket. I, there's tons of containers over there. Uh -huh. So I people, like... in any ways, instead of going to the dumpster... Yep. And improve the, the quality. Could have overdubbed it. How long is this going to take? Okay, until first, it's... first things first. Um, these Brillo pads are great when it comes to plaster. They work really well for cleaning up the table when you're done, so there's going to be little remnants of plaster. This is like sandpaper to plaster. You just scrub it off. Um, also, the inside of my bucket, I wasn't paying attention, I was too busy talking, and some of that plaster started to set up on my bucket. You can see there's like a white film. I don't like that. So 
So I just take that brittle pad to it and try and clean it out good. Um, you can reclaim things, but kind of like with all my tools, um, I have a set of buckets that are specifically for plaster making. So this is my wet plaster bucket. Mm -hmm. I have a similar bucket that says dry plaster. And then this is my sink bucket, my tool bucket. And those buckets serve one purpose, and that's it. It's always wet plaster, tool bucket, and my dry plaster. The setup time is going to depend on the ratio of plaster and the temperature of the water and how fast you mix it. Um, one way to tell, I never release my molds until roughly an hour at the earliest. Really quick way to tell is if it's hot. If it's getting really hot, then it's okay. But don't be in a rush. You do, the last thing you want to do is go through all the time setting up a mold and pouring the mold and then release it from the coddle forms too quick and totally destroy your, your mold.